But when I turned 16, I hit the streets. I, it was an eye opener. It was a different thing. You know what I'm saying? You really out here by yourself. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And my older sister, like when I left, she met me at the corner. She was like, I was crying. She was like, this ain't for the week. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like you in the streets for real for real now. You can't go back to mommy house. Ain't nobody gonna baby you. You know what I'm saying? So ever since she told me that, I've been hard body. What it do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I am your host, Day Day, and today I have a great one for y'all. I have a um, an artist, a female artist, who is out here killing shit, doing her thing, making connections, performing with this person, that person. We're going to get into it. Uh, no further more introduction needed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by Charlotte's own Lady Remedy. What it do? What it do, what it do. Y'all know what it is. I'm in here. This is my first podcast interview, so y'all bear with me. But you know what I'm saying? It's going to be lit. Vibes is up. I appreciate you reaching out to me because, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, I don't do many interviews and I don't get a lot of people reaching out to me. So this is definitely a door opener for me. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that. Of course. And I don't reach out to any and everybody. Um, I, saw, I saw your content on the Charlotte page. And I'm going to say that Charlotte puts out, I think, like five to ten artists every day on there. Some of that should be trash. Mm. I ain't going to hold you. But I saw yours. The substance you was talking about, not only was it good, but it was somewhat unorthodox in a way. And we're going to talk on that. Um, but, I, you know, I just had to. And like I said before, the day by day podcast is a help me, help you, help me, help you type situation. Right. That's all it is. Uh, you're originally from Charlotte. What part of Charlotte are you from? Uh, Southside Nation for the real exit foe. The reason people throw the foes up for real is because of Nation for exit foe. Let but we'll get into that later. Because everybody throw up foes and pictures yeah, and videos um, now, right? Yeah, because I guess the baby made it a, a thing for Charlotte being the foe. But I'm really from Charlotte, you know what I'm saying? So I know I know the background. Mm -hmm. But we'll I'll touch on that. So seeing Charlotte from what it was to what it is now. Um, well, let's let's start from the beginning. Growing up on Nation Ford, what was that like? Um, I can honestly say, like, I was adopted. So I was born in Baltimore, for one. So when I got to she Charlotte. from the crib. Yeah, Baltimore, Belly, y'all stand mm -hmm. up. What's up? Mm -hmm. So when I got to Charlotte, I was adopted. And me and my sister. So I was two years old. So I've been here since I was two. So this is all I know. I've never been back to Baltimore or anything like that. So oh, you have no, you never been since? Mm -mm. Okay. No. Got to visit. So now it's like, growing up on Nation Ford, I think... I had the best of both worlds because my adopted parents, they are amazing. You know what I'm saying? They installed church in me, how to take care of yourself. You don't have to look like what you're going through. You know what I'm saying? Hygiene, all of that. So when I turned 16, I didn't see the streets before then. I was there outside every now and then, but you know, street lights, got to mm -hmm. be in the house. My mom was very strict. But when I turned 16, I hit the streets. I It was an eye opener. It was a different thing you know what i'm saying you really out here by yourself you feel what i'm saying yeah and my older sister like when i left she met me at the corner she was like i was crying she was like this ain't for the week you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like you in the streets for real for real now you can't go back to mommy house ain't nobody gonna baby you you know what i'm saying so ever since she told me that i've been hard body mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying I, I, I went through the struggle homeless all my life i've been homeless ever since 16 i was homeless i just got my own crib last year you know what I'm saying? So shout out to it's, that. Yeah, hell yeah. It's 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 a struggle, man. I done slept in parks, bus stops, all kind of stuff. So mm. the streets is really different from being in a home, a great home. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, but I got the best of both worlds. Yeah. So what led you to wanting to adventure out and be, uh, you know, pushed out into the streets? If you would, Did, was that on your own or was it from a force? It was it was on my own. My um my. Real mother, she she from the streets. She hard, she hard body, you feel me? She from Baltimore or yeah, Charlotte? Yeah, she from Baltimore. Okay. And I heard a lot of stories about her, you know what I'm saying, in the streets and stuff like that. So it was like, I feel like it was in me, you know what okay. I'm saying? It was in me to be, to be that, that person, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But my older sister, Crystal, she left at the age of 16, and I was still in the crib. And I used to see her with all the homeboys on the block. They'd be across the street at the bus stop. And they'd be banging on the thing and she'd just be rapping. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and every time I seen her, it was just her and all our homeboys, but they protected her. Yeah. You feel me? They wouldn't let nothing happen to her. And when they seen me, they ain't know me like that, but they let me know, like, we got you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was, I yearned for that. Mm. I wanted to be there. You know what I'm saying? I, I used to watch her out the window late nights and I used to be like, I can't wait till I get out there. So yeah. the day my mama told me, yeah, if you want to leave, you can leave. Like, I thought, 
fuck out of there. Yeah. Yeah, I got home because I I just wanted to, I wanted to be there. Right. You knew that was something that you always wanted and to And I attain. was built for that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I was built for it. I wasn't aware of everything that I was going to come in contact with and everything was going to happen, but my spirit and my heart, I was like, I was always a strong person. Mm. So, okay, and, and that explains it because not every, not every, uh, not even just female artists, not every female in general would try to branch into that avenue where they stepping out in the streets, hang with the homies, trying to become one of them. Mm -hmm. If it is, they'll try to be on, you know, the opposite side, they'll try to be on, you know, I'm their girlfriend or whatever may have you. And that could have done it as well. But you saying you wanted to actually be in the mix also, not just be out there standing around looking pretty. You want to be in the mix. Yeah. And you said your sister, she was out there, you know, rapping when they was beating on the cable box and whatnot. Is that what inspired you to become a rapper in the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, really, when we was uh, staying at the house, when all of us was together, we'd have like, a, um, you know, little tapes where you take it out, flip it over, put it back in, mm -hmm. you record yourself. The cassette we, joint? Yeah, we had one of those. Okay. So... We always was singers. We was in the church. We always mm -hmm. been talented. All of us rap and sing. So singing came natural to us. Mm -hmm. We thought we was Destiny's Child. So one day we were just recording ourselves. She was beating on thing, and we'd just freestyle. I could never freestyle, but my other sisters they could. They had yeah. a down pack, but I couldn't freestyle for nothing. But that's how we started rapping. And mm -hmm. when she hit the streets, she dropped a mixtape, and her name was blowing up. Everybody knew who she was. Shout out to my sister Trevor Trap. Y'all know who she is. So. She started doing it, and I went home. I wrote my first song, and it was just been up ever since. Yeah, and that's why you wanted to do rapping instead of singing, because you said you could do both. Yeah, but because of your sister, she blowing up and whatnot. That's what made yeah. you want to do the rap. But it, we we grew up on Bone Thugs and Harmony. Oh, so she she kept us on that. So it was it was it was it was good together. You know what I'm saying? I could rap and sing. I did both. And that's what Bone Thugs did. So yeah. it makes sense. Hell yeah! I was like, if they can do that, I, and I know how to harmonize. Yeah. So it was it, it it played out good. Remedy, I fucking love Bone Thugs. Me too. I love them. What's your favorite song? Oh my god. Buddha Lover. Um, Buddha Lover. Resurrection. <laughs> I got so many. I love them. Crossroads. Of course. That's that's yeah. a classic. Yeah. I got a lot. I love them boys. First of the month. Uh yeah. I you know what? I love Thuggish Ruggish Bone, but you want to know my favorite part of Thuggish Ruggish Bone? Uh Tasha at the end. We got crazy. <laughs> I yes. fucking love that part. Yeah, That's she blank. At, yeah, yeah. Shout she out to hand. Tasha. Mm -hmm. She blank. That's what's up. Okay, so boom. So we, you know, we see the sister, we see the sister, the family is talented, making music, whatnot. Um, and then just that inspiration from your sister led you to rapping and whatnot. Uh how long have you so how long now have you been rapping for? Um I started rapping when I was 16. I'm 33 now. So mm -hmm. it's I've been rapping for a minute. So let's talk about the substance that you, you know, you rap about now. How would you describe it? Um honestly, I got a lot of anger built up behind my sister getting killed two years ago. Rest in peace to my sister Kelly. But um it's more I got a lot of anger. So my my messages are more like of retaliation, how I'm feeling, my anger. You know what I'm saying? How I want stuff to play out, how sh stuff should play out. It's, it's, it's more because I, I really, I named myself Remedy. My first rap name was Thump mm -hmm. for fighting because I used to fight all the time and they gave oh, me right. that name. So that was my rap name. But as I got older, I, gradu I graduated to like mm -hmm. singing. So I wanted to calm down a little bit. So I named myself Remedy. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was doing. I was just singing. Uh -huh. But after I lost my sister, it was like, I can't write no song. Cause I cry, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's more like let me get this anger as much as I can off my chest and put it in in song. So that's mm. what I've been doing lately. So it's been my message is kind of different, but not kind of different from when I was younger to now. Cause yeah. I got more pain on me now. Mm. All in all, the music is an avenue for you expressing yourself, just like any true art. And um, you went back and forth, and so you can do the singing because you do have songs, you know, where you're harmonizing, like you said, but. You're expressing, you know, the pain that you felt since the passing of your sister. Mm. Um, how long ago did this happen when your sister passed? Um, it's about to be three years in um, June. June. She, it was the uh, the big shooting we had two years ago at the Juneteenth. They were celebrating Juneteenth. Uh -huh. And a bunch of shots went off. Four people died. And she was the only girl that got killed. She got shot mm -hmm. twice and ran over by two cars. Damn. So just imagine like that, all of that just... Yeah. Trying to take that in every day. And that was my baby sister, like my best oh, friend, like man. all together, like 
every day, 24-7. You never seen her without us or us without her. So yeah. it was, you know what I'm saying? It was hard. But the only reason I started doing music again, because it was our dream. So I feel like there's no way I just got to stop, just stop doing music. Because yeah. yeah. I feel like that's, it's, it's connected. It still got us connected. Yeah, you're living that out through, you're living y'all's dreams out through you. You know, mm. you're channeling all that energy, um, you know, from the, you know, the, the sadness you feel, all of the emotions that you feel, and plus the dreams that y'all wanted to, you know, mm. see come to fruition, you're living out through your music. Um, and that's what's up. That's what's up. And uh, like you said, that explains, you know, the music that you put out now, because right now, you, um, you're not rapping. I'll say this, you're not making music or talking about the typical stuff that today's pop female artist if you would right. rap about because now you know you got you know uh girls talk about more so their body mm. than anything else yeah, talk yeah. about how they what is it how they pussy pink and they booty hole mm. brown you saw that so um, so how do you like what's your take on like the shit you whether it's singing you just have substance when you make music now mm -hmm. but then you see stuff of like Weird shit, not weird shit, but no weird shit. Yeah. <laughs> you said weird, sh weird shit. Too. Weird shit that gets put on now, and it's like, what the fuck? Like, how do you, you know, like take that type of stuff in compared to you putting out true substance? Right now, I now I've been thinking this for the past four months. I don't even know what the meaning of hip hop is right now. The meaning of hip hop point. is, I don't even know because I'm not knocking nobody that do music. You sell pussies, want to talk about your pussy and all that, that's fine. Mm. But what 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 music are we putting out right now besides the R&B singers, the females, mm -hmm. they're doing great. Yeah. But what music are we putting out as far as females for the younger girls that's growing up, letting them know you don't have to fuck this nigga to do nothing. You feel mm -hmm. me? Yeah. You, you, are, you a prize. A nigga going to put in that work. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? If he want he going to put that if work in. You, yeah, you feel me? And mm -hmm. you don't have to give in just on the first day or just like that. Like, I've always been shy with niggas. I I had my first boyfriend when my last year in high school. I lost my virginity my last year in high school, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I've never been the type to wear my ass out, walk around my titties out. I don't like to be exposed like that. I feel uncomfortable. It's just not me. And I'm not knocking nobody that do it. Because mm -hmm. y'all bitches, y'all look good when y'all put that shit on. You feel <laughs> me? But it's just not, I won't be comfortable. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? So I want to put out more messages like to the females that's growing up. Like, Beyonce, come on, girl. Like, mm -hmm. you still supposed to be putting that out for these young girls. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The city girls, they got they, they got they, uh, what they call them, the street girls. They got uh -huh. they girls. Yeah. They yeah. locked in. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But we also need them people that to let these girls know you beautiful. You mm -hmm. don't need no nigga validation. You don't need no friend validation. You have to love you for you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't gonna, I see some of the, I ain't gonna say ugliest girls, but some of the girls that are not as pretty. Mm -hmm. They, their self-esteem is through the fucking roof and that makes them beautiful. You feel me? Mm -hmm. The way they carry themselves, it makes them beautiful. So oh, it really yeah. don't matter how you look. It's how you carry yourself and your, your inside. You feel me? And that's what we really like. That's yeah. where, that's where like, it's fucked up nowadays. Like, they don't really, like, a true, a real dude likes that. Like you said, when you feeling yourself, when you, we can feel that energy where you know, think, and feel that you really beautiful no matter what, that you standing on 10 toes, that you real. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you like this, a real dude ain't looking for no bad bitch. We looking for a real bitch. Straight up. But that's where it's fucked up. Everyone think they got to be bad. They think they got to have a fat ass and get a BBL. I personally, I fucking love the fact that Glorilla, Koi yeah. Ray. And Jenna Aiko, they, you know, the slim petite tights and they wear that shit. Love I was just, I was just finna say that, like, for one Glorilla, I fucking love her. Mm -hmm. Just cause she from the streets too, you know what I'm saying? She been through some stuff. And then on top of that, she said, I'm not getting no BB, I'm not doing none of that. Y'all gonna have to love this big nose, my beautiful eyes, all of that. I love that, you feel what I'm saying? And then she's making other females that feel like they don't got no butt or nothing like that. Bitch, you still bad. You exactly. don't need that. Exactly. You don't need that. And I'm not knocking nobody that get it. I got friends that have it and they mm -hmm. look the fuck good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You yeah. do. That's what you want to yeah. do. But you don't have to do that. That's not, that's not meant for everybody. Yeah. Aaliyah, yeah. Aaliyah, Aaliyah put that state in it. She, she stated that. Yeah. Natural everything. Like, yeah. you don't have to be like that. And she was the creme de la creme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, like I said, that's what we really like. <laughs> yeah. That's what y'all feel to realize. That's what we really like. You know what I'm saying? I get it. If you're doing it to attract the money and whatnot. But that's what we really like. Um, to kind of backtrack a little bit, you said, you know, all this is coming from 
you don't know where hip hop is today. Um, I think it's more, can we even call it hip hop? I think it's more so pop. You know, I think when pop really started taking over hip hop or really started oversaturating hip hop, that's how we got to where we got to now where the you get put on, I don't, I'm not sure when this started. This might've started like around Lil B where you don't get put on for having dope lyrics. You get put on for something that's catchy, whether it's weird or not, yep. and a decent beat. That uh, that I just want to rock. Uh, yeah, uh, but didn't say anything in the song. Nothing. But he's creative, mm-hmm. and they like that. You mm-hmm. feel me? And it makes you want to dance. Yeah, it make you want to dance. So nowadays it's like it's it. Back in the day, it was standards. Mm-hmm. It was standards. Your music had to sound like a certain standard before for it to get played on the radio or anything. Now it's like, oh yeah, if you say your pussy fat is going on the radio and they're going to run with that and that's what it is. Absolutely. And I will say this, female artists are taking over. Like y'all are definitely- We locked down. The game yeah. is locked right now. Yeah. Yeah. The game is locked. But you're trying to introduce, or you're trying to bring forward more so um, a different avenue than what you said. Like you just talking about how fat your pussy is. Yeah. And um, and just like you said earlier with the Glorilla, like I'd see a lot of comparisons, you know what I'm saying, with y'all too as far mm-hmm. as- what y'all talk about and how y'all carry yourselves because she the same way. She don't be showing her ass and titties every second she get and she, like you said, she stands and she toes. love her body. Yeah. Every minute she say she thick as hell and you is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she love her body. So that's good for the females that's coming up. Mm-hmm. That's good for them. Yeah. And um, real quick, you said how with the I just want to rock, um, it just, it, he ain't saying nothing. And then it reminded me of this. He just want to dance. The Hey Y'all by Andre 3000 that came out like what fucking 20 years ago or some shit. Yep. That song, people don't realize like if you listen to that song, the lyrics are like not depressing, but they're not what you think. The mm. lyrics are like very kind of dark, but because the beat makes you want to dance. And I, this is why Andre 3000 is a fucking musical genius. Yes, he is. And he even says it in one part. He's like, y'all don't really hear me. Y'all just want to dance. Because like in the lyrics, he's talking about like some dark shit. Yeah. But the beat made you want to dance. And I think he did, yo, I think he was way ahead of his time by doing that. I think he predicted where the hip hop scene would end up going by that song. And he's great like that though. Yeah. He's great with music. Yeah. And he and he realizes the bullshit that it brings. That's why yep. he kind of took like his hiatus away from hip hop and, you know, every blue moon, maybe he may dabble, but that hasn't happened in a minute. But that makes sense. He saw the bullshit coming. Yeah. He did. So um, with your music, you know, as of lately, you had a few events pop off. Um, you recently did a show with Fabo. And then before that, you was with the Boosie Bash. Um, so let's take it back to the Boosie Bash to begin with. What was that like? Stressful as fuck. Mm. Well, what was it, first and foremost? It was the um, Boosie Bash. I think it was the, yeah, Boosie Bash 2023. Shout out to Boosie. You know what I'm saying? So he had a little um thing down in Louisiana. So... I went down there, but before that, prior to that, two weeks before that, I got scammed out of damn near five thousand dollars mm. off of somebody saying that, that I could open up for Boosie and everything like that. Yeah. So, sent the man my money. I know who the person is and all of that. We going through a, a little lawsuit, mm. whatever, right okay. now for me getting scammed. Yeah. They made me a, uh, and I'm saying this to tell y'all this, artists, make sure y'all are sending y'all money to the right people before y'all send y'all money. Make sure y'all do y'all research. All of that shit, because you can lose a lot, and these people be gone, and you never know who scammed you. Thank God I know who scammed me. Mm-hmm. But um, So how did the scam happen? Um, I was talking to, well, actually, I got scammed twice. The first time, I got to put that on me, because I sent somebody some money through a Boosie page that I thought was him, and it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So my um my people, Dre, he knew somebody that, was, that said they had something to do with it. So by him being his friend... I said, okay, we we can we can fuck with him. I'll send some more money because that's your friend. I don't think he'll do you like that. Mm-hmm. Three days came before the show and they stopped hitting me up. So I hit mm-hmm. him up and I'm like, okay, so y'all scam me. They like, no, 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 everything. Da, da, da. So I just so happened to get in contact with Boosie manager. Okay. It went through one of my homeboys. Yeah. Shout out to my boy. You know what I'm saying? He called him on three and he like, yo, she got scammed. So they ended up texting the the man like, yo. We know what's going on. We're going to post you on Fusion or whatever if you mm-hmm. don't da-da-da. So ever since then, they, they've they been going back and forth. Like, basically, okay, we're going to send your money, send your money. So I could have said, fuck it, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what? I'm still going to go down there. Regardless if I got my money took or whatever, I'm going to go down there. And if I have to stand on top of a fucking table and perform mm-hmm. for whoever, I don't care. I'm going to do that because... I don't, I'm not shy. I'm not scared to perform. Mm-hmm. So, And at this point, going out there, you were scammed twice. 
Out of how much money by then? In all, probably like six or seven bands. Damn. Yeah, so... Okay. So, um, and the real price was two bands to, po- to perform. So the mm-hmm. money I got scammed out of, I really would have got to perform if it would have got to the uh, right person. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we get there and I'm still depressed. You know what I'm saying? My, even when I get there, I'm still depressed because shit is not going to go yeah. where I'm supposed to go. Yeah. So we get there to the show. Oh my God, we go to the thing. No more tickets. Mm. What, to get in, to perform get, or both? No, no more tickets For to anything. get in. Damn. So I go back to the car, I ain't gonna lie, I'll drop some tears. I'm yeah, like, what the yeah, fuck that's, is that's going real. on? Like, yeah. So we sitting there in the car and my uh, my homeboy Dre, he like, you know what? We're going to the after party. Okay. Let's go now. So we won't have to wait in line. So right. we left early, went to the after party and we got in there. That motherfucker was lit. Yeah. It was lit as fuck. I got to be up there with Boosie. Mm-hmm. My phone died. I got one good video of us in there after party and then yeah. my phone died. So I didn't get, uh, really get to do that. So that night I went home. And I told him, moving back to the hotel, and I was like, y'all, tomorrow's my last day. I got to mm-hmm. do something. Mm-hmm. If I, I cannot go back to Charlotte, I done posted this fake-ass flyer. Yeah. They think I'm opening up for Boosie. Right. It's like, there's no way I can go back and tell these motherfuckers I didn't do shit. Yeah. You feel me? So the next morning, I got up early, did my hair, all that, put my clothes on, and we went to the block party. Okay. So that's when everything happened. He was doing Boosie karaoke. So I'm like, okay, this is my time. I yeah. go up there and do my thing. So I mm-hmm. waited to the last person. Mm-hmm. I was the last person. Man, we cut the fuck up. I performed Ratchet. Boosie was dancing with me. Yeah. All kind of shit. Had a crowd moving everything. So everything played out. You feel me? I kept mm-hmm. my faith. I went down there and did what I was supposed to do. And I still got to do more than what I would have if I would have paid that money just to perform. Right. So everything was everything worked out. But y'all artists, please be careful. If you don't got no manager, get somebody. Don't do that shit by yourself. Mm-hmm. I tried to do it by myself because I wanted to surprise my people. But... You, you you gotta have help. You gotta have at least somebody in your corner. Like y'all, just be careful. Yeah, and it's a lot of it's a lot of dirty snakes that know that people are in your position want to get that type of exposure. And they'll take advantage of it, which yeah. happened with the two scammers before. But with that, through that story, all in all, God really tested your strength. He did, and I ain't, I ain't let up either. I said, okay, I'm all. going, I'm going down there, and I talked to any and everybody, like kids, yeah, everybody, and they showed me so much love. It was no hate. From the females and none of that. It was just mm-hmm. like I was at home, like I was still in Charlotte. Yeah. So. That's that's a great uh man, that's a great story. That's a great lesson to share with people out there who, you know, they'll come across a bump in the road and they'd be like, fuck it, it's over. Cause you could have easily, when the tickets were sold out, you could have easily sat in your car, you cried what you did, um and what you cried what you did do, mm-hmm. and you could have just said, Fuck it. Yeah. That's it, let's go back to Charlotte. But that, that's why I'm like I'm glad I grew up mm. cause back in if I was younger I would've been like I wouldn't even went mm. for real for real after the scam and you yeah, would've I been like fuck it. I would've said fuck it yeah but I, I did just I was like nah I'm too I got too much pride and too much thug in me not to go down there and not do shit there we go hey I fucking love that story for real I really do Um, so growing up was, was Boosie one of your favorite artists growing hell up hell yeah, yeah. what <laughs> Boosie, Yo Gotti, Pastor Troy, Project Pat, Gangsta yeah. Boo, rest in peace. All right, P. God damn. God, I'm so hurt. I couldn't meet her. A little chat, all them. Yeah, them my them my people right there. Yeah. Okay, so out of everyone you just named, pick one. Boosie. Boosie. I, you know what? I can relate to him. It's a lot. How so? The streets. Mm-hmm. Everything he talked about. Boosie probably was one of the reasons I was out here whooping ass mm. and, and and not taking no shit from no niggas, you know what I'm saying? Or yeah. nobody. Not letting nobody disrespect me. And the reason I was representing the foe so mm-hmm. hard too, because that's where I'm from. And he represent that shit too. So yeah. yeah. Oh, Baton Rouge. Yeah. That was it was like, I think I was more starstruck than anything being yeah. around him. So it sounds like um when you did, you know, finally decide to jump off the porch into the streets. Boosie was like a um, a, a map, if you would, yeah. as far as laying that shit out. And that's the case with, a, and that's why I love Southern artists. Like, yeah, at the end of the day, I love lyrical shit. Like, mm-hmm. I'm very biased towards 90s New York hip hop. But two of my favorite artists of all time is Gotti, like you said, and Jeezy, because Ooh, it's, God, Jeezy. I love you, Jeezy. it's just different with like Southern artists, like, because they really raise you in a way, you know what I'm saying? Teach you shit or tell you shit and talk about shit that really must be instilled on how to be a thorough ass person. And that shit is huge. And like you said, Boosie, that's that's a no brainer with that one. Boosie had me in the streets. Like he held me down in the streets with Jeezy. He made me pick that bag up and start selling hustle. dope. You feel that me? <laughs> he did. Like that's mm. when I was in high school and I was listening to um 
all the stuff he was putting out, trap, trapping and all of that. Yeah. So, so you was really trapping. Yeah. Mm. I really definitely when I hit when I hit the block, it took mm -hmm. me a minute to get into it because I was more into music and fighting and just being me. Mm -hmm. But as I got older, you know what I'm saying, I learned a lot. Shout out to my guy, my Manisha too. So was there ever any fear behind the way you was moving in the streets? Hell yeah. 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 A lot. I mean, I think it was it wasn't fear, it was cautiousness, me being cautious. Like, cause mm -hmm. I I know what can happen. I've seen stuff happen like I rode to, example, I rode to Atlanta with my sister. We were supposed to move down there. Mm -hmm. We rode down there with two of our homeboys that was going to drop us off. Mm -hmm. We ended up going to Allen Temple where DG Yola from. Okay. They didn't tell us nothing. What they had planned on doing was picking up some pills and robbing the people. Mm. It didn't go like that. Yeah. We sitting in the car, me and my sister. They go in, do the business. They come out, the two niggas come out with them. Guns to their back, walking to the car. So I'm young. I, ju I just hit the streets. Right. My sister tell me, she's like, oh shit, they, we finna get robbed. So I'm sitting mm -hmm. there like, what the fuck? Yeah. This is my first time dealing with some shit like this. She's mm -hmm. like, we finna get robbed. So she was like, just chill, just chill. So I just sat back. I'm like, oh my God, it was just some real gangster shit finna yeah. happen. So the niggas come back, they like, where the money at? Where the money at? So we telling them like, we shit. getting dropped off. We don't know shit. So yeah. he like checked the glove compartment. So I pulled the glove compartment down. It's a whole bunch of bullet shells in there. Mm. Shut it back real quick. I'm like, oh my God. So they tell us to get out the car. We get out the car, whatever. They got the guns like they about to shoot the shit out these niggas. Yeah. So I'm sitting there with my my hands over my ears like this. Mm. Like, oh my God. My sister like, just chill, just chill. So they kept the niggas. They was like, y'all pull off. It's by the grace of God, y'all see these niggas again. Damn. Pulled off. A lot of you not with the family dollar. We panicking. We calling motherfuckers in Charlotte like shit. We da, 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 da. we come back up the street. They on the corner with they fucking drawers on. Mm. Nothing. Just yeah. at the corner standing there with they drawers on. We put, they get back in the car. This ain't funny, but it's funny. They get back in the car, bro. They start driving. Guess what came on? What? Motherfucking, uh... Ludacris, roll out, <laughs> like 40. I said, oh, they had knots all on the back of their head, bro. When Damn. I say me, my sister was in the back laughing. And y'all like, in the A. In Atlanta. Damn. You know, drove back the whole way. They didn't say shit. Yeah, what the fuck can you the say? White boy, he tried that shit in Memphis and they killed him the next week. Damn, white boy you was cool with? The, I, I didn't know him. We oh. was riding with my homeboy. Oh, he okay. knew him, so yeah. I guess they that's what they did. They was going around mm -hmm. trying to... So yeah, he got killed in Memphis the next week. But yeah, shit, I done, whew. Yeah, but you stayed 10 toes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I seen a lot at a young age uh -huh. and I'm glad I did. Yeah, because that helps you, it's experience. Yeah. Life experience is it helps you be sharp moving forward. That's what's up. Um, And yeah, like I said before, it's, it's just to quickly rewind with Boosie. It's a lot of ties with Boosie and Charlotte, I'm realizing. Um, he loves Boosie. He yeah. loves Charlotte. He's always in Charlotte. Yeah, I've noticed that. He was out here, what, maybe like two months ago. My homegirl was there. And um, Shaq, shout out to uh, Hot Boy Shaq, my dog. Well, Shaq. You know, him and Boosie, they had they had the track out, the outside remix. And just, you know, anytime he's coming around, like, it's just always, like you said, it's always love. Um he from, got something to fifteenth here in Charlotte too, bikini uh, superstars. Oh, superstars! That's on. That's the old nine three five, I think. Is that on Freedom? Freedom, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to get me a table and get in there. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, that's on all right. What's your favorite song by Boosie? Um, the first song that I fell in love with was Ratchet. That's the first time I heard Boosie when okay. when he when it probably wasn't when he dropped it, but my sister put me on that. That um, and that's that old school, old school Boosie. That's that. That's that. That's that Boosie, the yeah. real, that real Boosie. He, he was still in the streets. Yeah, then. that's prime, creme de la creme. Yeah, but I love, I love all his songs. I love Trill Fam, mm -hmm. Webby, Fox Mill, all of them. I grew yeah. up on all them niggas. I fuck with Webby too. A, a question that me and Shock brought up was, um, who was lyrically better between Webby and Boosie? Boosie probably had a bigger aura, a bigger movement. These are street niggas. They not. They're not lyrical. Like well, not lyrical. No, the question wasn't lyrical. It was who was better just spitting in general. Who just brought out a better vibe when they were spitting between them two? That was the question. That's hard. It was tough. Exactly. That's and that's, hard and that's the same thing we said. They was putting that shit out like, and it was mm -hmm. real facts. They were stating. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't. I can't choose. But if I had to, I would. 
I ain't gonna say nobody. <laughs> I can't. Great both, answer. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. Was, both of them was doing their thing. Like even great with the, the whole Trill fam, like yeah. the whole Trill fam CD. Yeah. All that shit was just dope. Yeah. Great answer. Yeah. Um. Again, like I said, being in Maryland, like it wasn't as listened to down there, but I was I was fucking with it heavy. I remember being in eighth grade and like all day every day I would listen to Adios. That was my favorite Trill fam Ooh, song. Yes. That Adios went absolute crazy. That was my shit right there. Um, all right, to go on the opposite track of the the music scene for a, uh for a second, your record "Crazy," which is more so harmony, more so the mm-hmm. singing and whatnot. Um, first and foremost, where did that song come from? What influenced that song? Because it sounds like whenever you make music, it comes from wherever your state of mind is at that moment. Like you said, where you're at now is from the passing of your sister, so you're expressing that mm-hmm. crazy. Um, that's, you know, kind of talking about, I'm assuming someone that drove you crazy or drives you crazy. Mm -hmm. So where did that come from? Um, honestly, I think I was in a shower when I made it and I I just started singing, making a hook. Like I did the hook crazy, which was simple. And then I just, I just wrote from that. And it really, I don't think it was really nobody in my life at the time when I was doing that. Cause I don't think I was really fucking with nobody then, but it was just more of me being an artist. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm an artist. I can rap. I can sing. I can write. So it was just like, that's how I write most of my songs. Like if I'm singing, I'll sing in the shower mm-hmm. and I'll go from there. Okay. So basically, and then on top of that, TLC. I sweat remedy. I put on everything I girls. love. That is the, the the vibe I was thinking of when I heard Crazy for the first time. I was just going to say that. It brings me to like a TLC type yeah. vibe. That is I always tough. wanted. I always want to keep, because they're my roots. Mm-hmm. Feel me, those yeah. them them some, some girls I looked up to, Destiny's Child, them, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? All all of the females back in the day. So I always wanted to keep that with me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Always have a mix of everything here, now, you know what I'm saying, a long time ago and ahead of time. Like I always mm-hmm. want to keep that mixture, not just focus on one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're definitely versatile. Yeah. And then like I said, that's definitely TLC type vibe. Yeah. So has anybody Ever drove you crazy? Hell yeah. I had one person that that drove me crazy. It was a girl that I was dating, first girlfriend ever. And I have never acted like I did towards her after the breakup. Like I was hurt, 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 hurt. Like stomach hurt, couldn't sleep, windows couldn't out, eat. fighting. Oh, you was, oh, you was wilding yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> and I've never done that with anybody else, and I would never do that shit again. So it was the first time. Yeah, first and last. But yeah. <laughs> How old was you? It was like 2015, 16. I don't know. My early 20s. And you said that was your first girlfriend, so you dated guys and girls. Mm. But I'm I'm more to girls. Girls, guys got too much shit with them. And I I don't know. They just, ugh. What is is just, ugh, what are they? Just lies. What 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 has pushed you away from guys right now? So you say you're only dealing with, mainly dealing with girls right now. I haven't been dealing with nobody for two years, like since my last relationship. And then my sister passed, and I can't mm-hmm. my, emotionally, I can't get close to nobody right now. So I just been to myself. But so, um, okay. So since you can't get, so is that is that going to take time or some sort of other healing? Do you think? I think it's going to take time, and then it's it's more so me meeting somebody new and them not understanding what my sister meant to me. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Or That's what you don't want to come across. Yeah, because I don't want to be somewhere with somebody and I just be crying. Mm-hmm. I just bust out crying. They like, oh, they don't oh know here go again. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the people I be around now, they going to know off the rip. Like, yeah, we know what's time. up. You feel uh-huh. me? But just trying to get close to somebody and they didn't, they get tired of me getting emotional because I get emotional all mm-hmm. the time about my sister. So it's mm-hmm. like, I don't want them to be like, oh, oh I'm sick of this. Mm-hmm. I can't do this. No, nigga, you need to be able to, even if you didn't know my sister, understand the pain that I'm feeling and why I feel how I feel. Yeah. The last person you dealt with was that, was your, was this before or after your sister passing? During. This was during. Yeah. And shout out to Liddy. I'm going to shout him out because he held me down. Okay. He was with me when I got the call mm-hmm. and everything, even after that. But our relationship was rocky at that point. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So it was like, it wasn't hard for us to branch out from each other. Mm-hmm. But we still talk every day. That's yeah, my dog. Like, solid. that's my best friend. I can mm-hmm. honestly say that's my best friend. Yeah. You feel me? So shout out to Liddy. I always got love for you because he held me down with my sister and even still to this day. Mm-hmm. I know if I was to be around him and I cry, he know. 
Is that important for you when you, so say the time comes when you do want to deal with somebody new, is that important for you to build that friendship foundation first? Or do you not look at that being such an important part when, you know, potentially becoming in a relationship with someone? Because some people be on both sides. They be like, yeah, I want that friendship foundation. Some people like, I don't really need that because I'm going down the other road on a relationship path with them. I really like to be more friends first than anything. Like uh-huh. with my homeboys, man, me and my homeboys like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it wouldn't be hard of like if I was to be like that with somebody and then they come at me a different type of way. And mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, he cool. I can trust him. We got a good friendship. Then we can see where it go. But mm-hmm. I don't be too quick to rush into nothing with nobody. So has that ever been something that I'm pretty sure it's been something that, you know, came up before. Does it cross your mind since you were more so quick to hang out with the dudes, hang out with the fellas from the first time you jumped in the streets at 16 to where you are now to where like, even when they were homies, they would still kind of try you, you know, as a woman, like, you know, try to like come on to you Mm. or head on to you, hit on to you and whatnot. Like, um, is that something that was always in the back of your mind and did that happen frequently? It happened when I first got out and then I I didn't like it at first because, you know what I'm saying, a lot of niggas, oh, do, 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 do. But then once you get older, you're like, you're pretty. That's what it comes with, you know what I'm saying? But when they got to know me and know me, I wasn't one of those sweet type of females. Mm-hmm. They didn't try me like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always grew up around just a bunch of niggas, just me and my sisters and a bunch of niggas. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. So I, I learned to carry myself in a certain type of way. To let these niggas know you can't come and approach me any kind of way. Mm-hmm. It's the way I carry myself. You feel me? Yeah. Niggas going, if you out there shaking your ass, your ass on, they going to come at you like a hoe mm-hmm. or however they feel. Yeah. But if you out there like, and I always got a natural mug, I'm never like just all in niggas' faces. They mm-hmm. going to be like, they going to second guess like, all right, I got to watch yeah. how I approach this bitch. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was like the kind of letting them know like, yeah, nigga, I ain't on that type of time. Yeah. Tread lightly. Yeah. yeah. So since your last, um, your most recent relationship was with Liddy and that was so well and whatnot, then why, like, when you said now it's more so women? If it ended on such good terms with a dude, why now are you more so leaning towards women? I ain't gonna say it ended on good, good, good terms, but it, it yeah, just I mean, wasn't yeah. a problem. You feel yeah, me? We yeah, had yeah. a situation where it made us split up, but. Okay. Yeah. And I, I've, I don't know. I, like I said, I hang around a bunch of niggas, so I know how niggas do. Okay. I see how niggas yeah. do. You feel me? I see how niggas do when they're in a relationship. <laughs> I see how they do when they're not in a relationship. I see how they do when they want to be in a relationship. Yeah. My niggas tell me. Uh-huh. They put me on game. So it's like, it's hard for you to run game on me. Even if I feel like you're cheating, I'm going to say something, I'm leaving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I probably got one one trial in me if we run it back. But other than that, I'd be so hard. I'd be so, I stand on that. I don't, my mama raised me different. That's definitely a cheat code with girls that hang out with a lot of dudes. Y'all know yeah, the ins and outs on, of the fucking game. <laughs> and even if they don't tell me, I see how they move. I don't, I don't tell, you know what I'm saying, be telling their business and no shit like that. But these are my boys and I peep game when I'm around. Mm-hmm. I, I keep my mind, my ears and my eyes open. So I know what the fuck going on. So say you with your homeboys, right? And a badass joint walk by, like you checking her out with them, like all oh, y'all, like damn, yeah, that I'll shit, be like, fire. Hell yeah. yeah! I'm like, God damn, they're <laughs> yeah. like, what? And they they're trying to talk to her before I talk to her. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so you would run down on her in front of the in front of the homies and, and bag her straight yeah, like that? Yeah, I was with my homeboys yesterday at the liquor store, and it uh-huh. was like bad bitches walking back to back to back. I'm rolling the window. I'm like, God damn. Yeah. But when I say that, they will look back, and then the niggas will start talking. They're like, uh-huh. Yeah, you bad as hell. I'm like, Oh lord. They st- yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, she bad. Okay. So what's the approach? So let's let's give a little game. So what's the pr- approach you take when trying to grab something? Do you go at them like a dude, like just straight at it, or do you take like a more like subtle approach with it? No, I don't be calm because mm-hmm. I'm shy, so I have to put like a little character ah, in it. So okay. I like you right at her. Yeah. So if I'm like at the club, like oh, you know what I'm saying, say some little crazy shit, yeah. buy a drink, uh-huh. and start talking like that. And half the time the bitches be drunk and they don't even really be gay. So they just give you conversation in the yeah. club. So I don't do too much talking to females in the club. But as far as like if I see somebody online or something, mm-hmm. I hop in the inbox, what's up, like a couple pictures or whatever, mm-hmm. and just go from there. And I don't what, be spitting and, and, no game. And yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to do that. I've been telling people I don't have game. Like I just, I have conversation, I have vibes, and it depends on how I'm feeling, honestly. But, um, 
Uh, what was I about to say? But um, so when you do say you you see something online and you know what I'm saying you DMing her or whatnot, what is what if she thinks like you just being cool and friendly and complimenting at first? How do you break the ice as far as shorty? I'm trying to get at you. I I mean you could tell like you could tell if a girl really like trying to fuck with you. Oh y'all can tell. Like, you could tell like how she oh, talking right. to you and shit like that. Oh, but all right. If anything, I just be like, so you like girls or you fuck with girls? Mm -hmm. She be like, yeah. She be like, no. And I be like, all right. Mm -hmm. Man, do we just be cool? I'll just leave the shit alone. You ever mess with a dyke? <laughs> yeah. Right. You talking about some pfft, the whole time you there? <laughs> no. Never again. It was a one and done? She try to fight me every day. Damn. Like like throwing hands? Every Yeah. She try to fight me every day. What was and I fighting it, about? Nothing. I would nothing. Like she just insecure. Oh my God, dude, it was horrible. Like it was to the point where I tried to leave the house and she wouldn't let me leave. And my little sister would have to come up and literally push her out the way and open the door and be like, go ahead, sis. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like Damn. shit like that. So that was, I wouldn't do that. And I feel like I'm too hardcore. I'm too. Yeah, that's too. Yeah, Cause you don't, you're not necessarily that, but feminine. you're. Yeah, yeah. That's too. That's two of two similar in a way. Nah, that opposites attract. That's not opposites. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't think it'll it'll work out. Back in the day, probably I thought it would. Because mm -hmm. there's some fine dykes out here, but it's just like some of them dykes can't fight. Some of them dykes is not real niggas. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it's just a lot with them. I I'm, ain't knocking them because y'all be fine as hell, but it just I'm too thugged out. I'm I um I I've been cool with like maybe two or three dykes my whole life. But one thing I did learn is they do be emotional as hell at the end of the day. Sometimes they be more emotional than the but regular chick. They look do at it. They're a female. Yeah. They're yeah. still girls. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what fucked me up. Because I don't expect I'm not saying you can have no soft side, but don't be don't be no bitch around me. Mm. Don't be no, you know what I'm saying, scary and all that mm -hmm. when it comes to that. And don't try to act harder than what you are. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So it's... it's, it's yeah, hard. so it sounds like a dyke wouldn't mix good with your vibe and your persona. You need, like, the girly side. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Because y'all would mean, be battling for, like, who's the more, like, uh, who's the more, who's the alpha in the situation? Y'all be battling over that. Yeah. Is that what happened with you and the uh, dyke you was uh, messing with? No. It was just more, she was just overprotective. Mm. And we was young too, and she was younger than me too. So it was like, then that was my first time. So I'm like, oh God. Have you ever dealt with both at the same time? Oof. The, my um, we, me and my my last boyfriend lady, we tried to polygram. The poly, how he said. Mm -hmm. po well, there's so many words for it. Poly, whatever. I was ready to say polyester. <laughs> <laughs> Three relationship, uh, polygamy. That's what it polygamy, is. Polygamy. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, we yeah, tried that, and so y'all add y'all added a girlfriend to the mix. Yeah, we tried it, mm. and it didn't. I, I don't know. I don't know. Would I you try it her, again? In a relationship, no. Mm. But if I was in a relationship with a man, mm -hmm. and he wanted to do a threesome, I'd probably do that. I've never done it before, but I'd probably do that. Well, you never, oh, you never done a threesome, but you yeah. tried the three relationship mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, I didn't get to that that point, because I wasn't, I'm not pressed about sex, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was like, I'd rather get to know a person before we we do all of that extra shit. That's the type of person I am. Some sort of connection. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't really pressed about that, so we didn't do that. But I like to have fun. So if I was to find being in a relationship with a girl and she want another girl, a boy, another another girl, mm -hmm. I'm open to that. You know what I'm saying? But we got to be like Locked vibing. In. Yeah. 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 Nah, I'm definitely um, on that same type of time where as far as you said, you need like some type of connection. Like as far as like before with like fucking around and whatnot. Um, cause for the longest, like, I don't know for how many years, but like, I was fucking a lot, but I realized I was only fucking and that was it. Nothing more, nothing yeah. less. And you know, in the beginning, it's like, this shit lit. Like when you went high school and maybe and I never college. Did. I never did nothing like that. Well, I mean, and it's, and it's, di it is different for women. Like, cause if, I don't know, I just think maybe it's something inside of y'all that like, knows that that's not really the way to go on about it. But with dudes, it's different. Like, we kind of can't wait to just fuck off in high school and college but it's and all not, that. I'm not, it's not nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. If you're not in a relationship and that's what you want to do, protect yourself and do what you do. You feel yeah. me? Because some, I ain't going to lie, somebody said on, I don't know if it was on the radio or something, I think it was a comedian. Mm -hmm. He was like, don't be waiting all your life not having sex and shit. And then when you get older, you try to do it and you can't. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So that what made me open my eyes like, all right, now, Tay-Tay, 
You can't just be locked down like that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If you find the right one and you done got old and shit uh -huh. and you can't do half the shit you used to. Yeah. So it's like, it's nothing wrong with that. Live yeah. your life, have fun, just protect yourself. And I feel like that's probably, I don't know. I just, I'm just not the type of person to just be fucking anybody. Like, I just can't just be fucking you and looking at you like, what are we fucking for? Mm -hmm. That's what I, that's, <laughs> that's what I've, that's what I've gotten to. Why? Well, well, what it was with me was I realized at a point where, I was like being used as a personal dildo for for chicks. See? You know what I'm saying? And like that shit was like, it's like some type of it's not it's not blatant disrespect on shorty side, but it is some type of passive like, all right, man, the fucking all nasty like that shit. But like, if you but if you're allowing that and that's okay with you, then we'll see. I was okay with it at first, but then I transitioned to like, all right, I need like some type of connection at least. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now don't get it, don't get it twisted. Like there is instances where I've just had friends with benefits and that's all we did. And I was completely cool with that. But then, like, I mean shit. But you got older and you like, uh, what the fuck is we doing? It's but a waste. That's, that's it's a, when you it young. can be a waste of energy. Yeah. When you're yeah. young, that's what you that's what you expect to do. That's and, what you expect to do. And that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And then again, it's it becomes like a eye, right, man. Like, I gotta cherish my energy better. Like, what the fuck is really going right, on? Right, right. Yeah, I've been chilling heavy too, man. Like, I've been chilling heavy, man. But that's like, that's how I say it, it comes with growing up. But I just always been a shy person. Like a nigga couldn't even give me a hug back then. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger, you couldn't even put your arm around me. So what'd you do? Like, oh nigga, you gay. Yeah, like, oh, get off <laughs> me. Like, it was it was just weird with niggas. I always been like that. I got a homegirl like that. Like last time we seen each other, we left. And I was and we was hugging each other. And she was and we, we was hugging for like a minute. It's like, all right, nigga, that's too long. Get up off me. This gay. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Um, but uh, all right, cool. So, Remedy, it's 2023, 2024 is going to come up on us quick. It's already April, we're already in the, we're already in the second quarter of 2023. What's to come from you in the year 2023? Definitely dropping a mixtape, um, this summer, first, first mixtape ever, and I'm finally done with it. I just got to go back and put a, a few more things in, but um, my mixtape. And I definitely want to do more shows out of town. That's my mm -hmm. biggest my biggest thing right now is to be out of town. Yeah. Um, the mixtape, what's it going what's gonna be the name of it? Street Chronicles. Street Chronicles. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What's the what's the meaning of Street Chronicles in that mixtape? And why are you dropping it? Me, just me and everything I've been through and the uh different stuff that I've seen and stuff that I might see, stuff that I've done. And it's like I just want to. I want to put this out, and then for my next one, my next mixtape, I can see how I've elevated. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah. even just the music, just what I'm saying, what I'm talking about, how I'm performing, how I'm. You know what I'm saying? So this, like I said, this is my first mixtape, and it's basically summing up who I am. Like I'm really from the streets. Like I really, the streets really made me into the woman that I am. Besides my mom and dad installing those things that I should know as a female, as a woman. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So how the streets really held me down. And just basically everyday street life. Mm. And when that's coming out, uh, do you know like uh, an estimate time range when it's dropping? I want to do it. I'm trying to think probably my birthday, July 23rd. But then again, I want to I think I want to drop it on the day that my sister passed. Okay. In June. Mm. So um, it's either between those two dates. Nice. And you said, um, as far as the performer, you're trying to perform out of the city. Have you performed out of Charlotte yet? Well, mm -hmm. the, the Louisiana. Louisiana. Um, I've performed in Atlanta a couple times. Um, I've I've opened up for Asian Doll, CIAA in Atlanta. Um, we've been to Howard's Homecoming. Mm -hmm. We performed out there. Um, where else I performed at? What was, what was your favorite place? Louisiana. Yeah, the Boosie Bash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, where's a city that you is like on your wish list as far as where to perform at? I can't. I knocked it off. Yeah, Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. That's one. And then Chicago. Yeah, they wild out there. Oh, they. Would, I, lo I love they Chicago. Would, yeah, they would love you out there. I but, love Chicago. I definitely want to go. I I want to go to Chicago and I want to be accepted by Chicago. You feel mm -hmm. me? I want them to like me. I fuck with Chicago, Jamaica, New York. All the up top people, yeah, I love Jamaica, New York, or Jamaica the island. Jamaica by itself in uh -huh. New York. Okay, I thought you said Jamaica Queens. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So Jamaica the island and New York City. Mm. Yeah. Well, speaking into existence, 
You oh, gonna yeah. make you gonna make them shits happen. Yeah, I'm trying to definitely knock New York out. I can I can knock New New York out this year. So I'm that's that's what I'm pushing for really for this year 23 yeah. in New York. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to it. Yep. Looking forward to it. Um, so with the mixtape, is it going to be just you or any collabs? Only a uh, collab I have on there is my little sister. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I, um, a collab with her, and then my bonus track will be one of her songs that she did. Is this the sister that passed? Mm-hmm. Okay. So y'all already did the song. You're just waiting for, you know, to master it and throw it on the mixtape. Yeah, that. it's um, it's mastering everything. Okay. We got a lot of songs together, but this is the song that we made prior to her passing. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna put that on there, and then one of the songs she did prior to her passing on her own, I'm gonna put that on there for a bonus track. That sounds tough. Yeah, that sounds like a great she idea. She's gonna be my only feature. Shout yeah. out to Kelly. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. And um, what's a uh, speaking to manifestation? A collab that you would like to happen sometime this year? A different collab. I, my first main collab was Gangsta Boo. Mm. So you know what I'm saying. So hopefully I can I can get with a little chat. Yeah, and we do something. But um. Shit, I want to work with the old artists, Pastor Troy, Missy Elliott, all of them. Beyonce, of course, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, Remy Ma, all mm-hmm. the old I older people. Remy. I definitely want to do something with Glorilla. We got, we got, yeah. it. we gonna, we gonna do something. Y'all, like I said, that. y'all have, yeah, yeah. We speak. Listen, that's what we, we do on Day by Day podcast. Yeah. We speaking into its existence. Y'all have very similar vibes, um, similar styles. Like you said, y'all just. Y'all, y'all tapped into that street shit. Mm-hmm. Yo, uh, Gotti too, yo. Gotti. Jeezy, all mm-hmm. them Boosie. Tapped yeah. in. Gonna make it happen this year in 2023. So um, before we get out of here, my last question, because at the end of the day, I brought you on here because I love you. I love that you want that street shit. It's mm-hmm. so like I said, it's different. The only other person I probably seen was, or that's mainstream, is maybe Glorilla, like we said. I've seen a few on the Charlotte page. Mm-hmm. Um, I might have to tap in with a few of them, but um, I know we spoke oh, on Oh, yeah, it. it's a lot of hot artists. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And, that, and it, so, at least up top, it's not a lot of that. Mm-hmm. You know, New York has their drill shit. They're on a whole nother realm. Like, But just the street shit that you speak on and like some other female Charlotte artists, are speaking on, you don't see that a lot. I've seen it more so anywhere else than here in Charlotte. Why do you think that is? Charlotte is, we got hoods, and but the other the other parts are like they got they they more they got more dangerous shit going on. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like with Chicago, they hood different from our hood. Yeah, we people might get killed and shit like that, but they like that. I don't, I, don't know, I can't explain that. But I tell a lot of motherfuckers, I say you in Charlotte acting like this. If you go somewhere else, they are gonna bust your ass. Mm. You feel me? Yeah. Cause it's 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 different everywhere you go. Yeah, Charlotte, Charlotte got hoods, like I said, but we don't have no fucking like just horrible mm-hmm. type shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like back in the day, like Don Village and all of this shit. Like we not we not compared to Chicago uh-huh. and the in the different type of hoods like where they're from. So I guess we 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 talk about it different. Mm. You feel me? Like I can't, I, I can't sit up here and say, "Oh, I spin a block every day, every day, every day." Somebody die, every day, somebody die. And thank God that mm-hmm. I don't have to right. say that shit. Live you feel that. me? Yeah. But I've been through some shit, and I've yeah. I've lived in the hood, and I've lived that life. You mm-hmm. feel me? And maybe um, another thing that might have something to do with it. I mean, it's guns everywhere, but maybe the gun law yeah. in North Carolina as well is something that I thought of that might have a part to do you with it. You know, they as well. switched the gun law. What is it now? You don't have to have a permit to get a gun. That's in North Carolina, also. Mm-hmm. I heard that they passed it. They in. just did that. No, they just did that recently. And the yeah. gun, the gun stores were packed the past week. Mm, damn. The only thing is, you can't like if you got a felony or records. They they do do a criminal background. Yeah. But if you just like ain't got no background, you want to go get a gun. You go get a gun. You have to have no permit no more. I didn't even know that was in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. I heard they just a, did it. I forgot what state it was. Was it Jersey? I forgot what state it was. But I did not know that that got passed in North Carolina as well. Interesting. Yep. All right, so like we said, um, coming to 2023 from you, Lady Remedy, we got the mixtape dropping soon uh, with a collab from your baby sister, R.I.P. Um, and then, you know, you're going to make these uh, performances happen outside of Charlotte. Um, looking forward to that. New York, Chicago, yes, that's on the map. We're going to make that shit happen. Um, before we get out of here, is there any, you know, final message you want to give out to your your audience, your followers? First of all, I want to say thank you to you. 
Cause this interview been real, and I've never done like a deep interview like that where I can express myself and talk about certain stuff. Absolutely. And to the artists, y'all, please, please, please make sure y'all know who y'all tapping into when y'all sending y'all motherfucking money out. Mm. Real talk. Make sure y'all got the right information. Make sure y'all got somebody on y'all team that know what they doing. Even if, even if you're a young upcoming artist, have somebody in your team that know the legal way to do shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that I didn't get on at a young age because I would I didn't want to listen to nobody. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that's why God held me back. He like you 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 going to destruct yourself if you go into this shit right now. If I put you there, you're not going to make it. You're not going to go far because you don't know how to shut the fuck up and listen. Mm -hmm. But now I've grew. And I know how to be quiet. I don't let nobody run over me, but I know how to shut up and listen yeah. to people that's been before me. Yeah. So, um, and also let me give a shout out to my hood, Exit Fold, Nation for a Road. And when I said this earlier, back in the day, niggas, I know motherfuckers wouldn't even throw the foe up because they represented Southside Nation Forward. The north side had the thumbs, west side had the dubs, east side had the ease, and we had the foe. The north side was throwing foes up too. I guess that was for like thug life or something. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the foe was for exit foe, nation for a road. Mm -hmm. That's where the foe came from. I don't know. Salute to the baby because I'm not knocking you and I'm not throwing no shade. But ever since he been saying it, he made it the foe. You know what I'm saying? The he whole was, I guess it's a trendsetter or whatever. Uh -huh. But when you really from Charlotte and you know the streets, you know where Exit Four came from. You feel me? You know where the four come from. You know why people throw the four up mm. in Charlotte. So that being said, shout out to Nation Four Row Exit Four. Shout out to the West Side, the East Side, the North Side. Everybody that fuck with me, I done stayed on every side. Shout out to my mom and daddy. My sisters, I ain't going to name no names because I'll be naming names. All my brothers, y'all know who y'all is. My niece and nephews. Um, Who else? Drill him, Dre, I got to shout you out because this man has been in my corner for so long, putting up bread with me, recording me at my shows. Even when nobody was there, he'd be there with me. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So salute to you, my nigga, because he keep me going. He keep me pushing. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to him. He gave me the opportunity to be in his shop. And I do hair. got my own business. Specialized in locks. I work out of his shop. So there we go. definitely salute to him. Um, and all the artists, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of artists I want to work with in Charlotte. I can't name everybody, but y'all tap in with me because I want to work with y'all. Any artists that want to do features, y'all tap in with me. I'm not charging shit. I ain't on. I ain't nobody big right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let's let's get this music in. And that's it. And rest in peace to my little sister, Kelly. I love you, bitch. You know, I got you. I got mm -hmm. us. I got we. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I love the vibes. Hey, that's real. I felt that. I know everybody tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening. I know y'all felt that as well. Um, but speaking of which, I really appreciate y'all for tuning in. Like I said, whether it's YouTube, if it is YouTube, make sure that you hit subscribe and like and share this out. If you're listening on audio, go ahead and hit like as well and leave a rating. You can go to the link in my bio in the archive, in the description and fill out that podcast questionnaire. Um, and shout out to Lady Remedy for stopping by Charlotte's own Nation Ford in the building. The motherfucking four in the building. There we go. And it's just like that, y'all. Until next time, make sure that y'all stay safe. Stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace. One more thing. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Make sure y'all go follow me on all social media. Instagram, L-A-D-Y underscore R-E-M-E-D-Y-Y. -Y. Everything else, straight Lady Remedy, no underscore. Make sure y'all go follow me. Follow me, follow me, follow me. And we're going to put all that in the bio. Let's go. Yes, sir. Till next time, y'all. Peace.